In this movie, we will look at migrating from the VAA title blocks to title block border objects, the advantages, the differences, and how to go about doing it. The key advantages of switching from VAA title blocks to title block borders are that the layouts are simpler to edit or customize. You can have an unlimited number of custom fields. You can push issue and revision notes or drawing stamps to multiple files. Transmittals are much more reliable. You can also pull transmittal data from multiple files. You can add zones and grids to the integrated border. You get a live preview of the title block as you are entering data. You can use formulas to build a complex drawing number, for example, you know, a number plus the revision plus an issue, you know, whatever it is. You can push sheet data such as checked by or scale to multiple sheets at the same time. You get better plot date functionality and you have the option to control north points from a chosen heliodon. So what are the key differences between the two systems when you start using them? Well firstly the title block border object is going to replace all VAA title block objects in your drawing. And title block borders use a styled symbol definition rather than a simple symbol definition. The process for replacing one title block with another is different. The title block manager command replaces the VAA revise issue print command. The selection of sheets for adding issues, revisions or stamps to at the same time is slightly different. And transmittals require a drawing issue to be created for each issue column in the transmittal. So when should you make the switch? Well if the features listed previously are compelling then I would proceed with converting uh, the project to using title block borders. Just be aware that existing transmittals will not convert to the new system. If your needs are more simple and you've only got a few sheets or you're not using transmittals, then you can continue to use uh, VA title blocks. But um, ultimately, you want to switch over to using title block borders, maybe for new projects. Both VA title blocks and the VAA revised issue print will continue working for the foreseeable future, but they will not see any more development. In order to convert a VAA title block to the new title block border object, you select a title block and click the Convert to Title Block Border button. You'll get this dialog which allows you to uh, watch an overview movie, which we recommend. Uh, and once you watch the movie, you can then repeat the process and the next time click the Convert button. Now, if this is the first time that you are converting a title block, it's worth doing the selected title block only and unchecking this option, delete old title blocks. And the reason for this is that it will create a, a new title block border and put it underneath the existing VAA title block and you'll be able to check if everything lines up and everything got converted correctly. So let's go ahead and click update. And you'll see now we have these two title blocks on top of each other and for all intents and purposes, they are identical, which is exactly what we wanted. On top, we have the VAA title block, and you'll see immediately below that, we have the title block border, and it's all converted exactly as you would want it to convert. So once you've done that, you could then manually delete that extra title block, maybe go down to the next sheet layer, select the next VAA title block, click Convert, and this time choose all title blocks in the current file, delete old title blocks. And when you click Update, you'll see that this object will get converted to the title block border, as will all of the other objects in the file. So what happens when you convert a title block, a VA title block, into a title block border? Well, let's go through this process. And before we do, I'll just remind you that when you have uh, VA title blocks in a drawing, uh, 
we have this set to symbols and plug-in objects, you'll see a folder called VAA TB symbols and in that is where the symbols that are driving these title blocks are stored. So let's go ahead and convert and see what happens. So we'll go convert, convert all the title blocks and we've got a couple of different styles of title blocks in this drawing. Delete old title blocks and click update. Now let's open this folder and see what's in there now. And you'll see there's two additional title blocks in here. These are the ones, the converted title blocks that you'll now use. And you'll notice that they are red, which means that they are a styled symbol. Uh, they have the same name as before, but they have the word style appended to the end of the name. Now, uh, we had two existing title blocks in this drawing, and these got converted to two different styles. So how do you edit these styles? Well, there's a few ways you can jump into the style editor. You can right click in this location and choose edit. You can right click on the title block itself and choose edit plugin style or you can come over here and go edit style as well. All those three things will open up the title block border style dialog. Now there's only a subtle difference between this dialog and the dialog that appears when you click title block border settings. And the subtle difference is that the word settings is here instead of style and all of these icons here are grayed out so you can't change whether something is controlled by the style or not. So let's go back in to edit the style again and just have a quick look in there. So note that this says title block style and now we can see and click these buttons here. The key things here are that this is where you edit the title block layout by clicking this button here and that will take you into the symbol that's driving it'll take you into this red symbol here for example and we can see here that we we have the the title block in here and we can go ahead and, and edit it uh, that's a group we can ungroup that and as we select each block of text that is dynamic you'll see that there's a special little section down the bottom here where you can choose what value in the title block that that is, or what field in the title block that is linked to. But there'll be another movie that describes uh, that in more detail. So once you have these symbols and you have customized them, you can either copy them into your template file or you can save them out into the um, default content system and you can do that by right clicking and choosing export and you'll want to export them out to uh, the user folder and object styles title block border and it, you, will, you won't see any, any files in here, so you'll just select that, uh, click OK. And Vectorworks will create a file and save these symbols out there. And once you do that, then on any new project, when you select the title block border tool, your saved title blocks will be available in the tool. So let's see where the equivalent options are for each of the title blocks. The object info palette for the title block border has fewer options as these are folded into the main settings dialog. In the edit title block dialog, you'll be familiar with the drawing info, project info, revision journal, and issue journal tabs. And the equivalents are the sheet data tab, the project data tab, the revision data, and issue data tab in the title block border settings dialog. The North Point and Drawing Stamp dialogues from the VA title blocks have been rolled into the Title Block Border Settings dialog, and you'll see the North Point here and the Drawing Stamp here. And for the North Point, you'll note that uh, here's the use the Heliodon rotation angle, and if you turn that on, the uh, North Point will use the rotation angle from the Heliodon. If there's more than one Heliodon, you'll get asked which one you wish to use. And finally, 
page and border info has now been shifted into the main title block border settings dialog as well. The VAA revise issue print command has now been replaced by the title block manager which has a separate dialog for choosing which sheets and title blocks you want to add issues, revisions or stamps to. The final thing I want to touch on is the title block manager and you can open this from the file menu by going down to title block manager or by selecting any title block border object and clicking the title block manager button in the object info palette. Now, if you have multiple files open, when you uh, ch click the button here, you will be asked if you want to load all of the currently open files into the title block manager or just the active one. And this will determine which sheets in which files you're pushing revisions, issues, drawing stamps, uh, and so on to. So it's important to, to be aware of uh, which sheets and drawings that you're actually acting on. So the first thing to note here is the size of the dialogue and when you see this previous and next buttons here it means that there's more information to display and to avoid having to use the previous and next buttons you can just make the dialogue bigger and most of the fields should appear uh, without having to do that depending on the size of your display. In the Manage Sheet Data sub-dialog, you can change the order of the fields. So for example, you mightn't be using any of these other fields, but you might use the Notes field. So you can click and drag the Notes field up here, and it's going to appear in this list further up, um, and you will then avoid having to click the Next button when you open the dialog. So when I click OK now, you'll see that the notes field is actually moved up here so I no longer have to click to the next screen to get to it. Now it's important here to note that this dialog here is what determines which sheets you're acting on and as I mentioned before we only have one file open at the moment if you had multiple files open you would see each of the files listed here and you can open and close the files using the disclosure arrow and you can select or deselect all of the title blocks in a file by clicking against the file name or you can individually turn them on and off as well. So if you wanted to push a revision out to all the sheets then you would come in here first you'd select these and then you do the revision. Note that you can save sets so that in a project where you're sending different sets of drawings to different groups of people or, or whatever, uh, you can save the, the setups of which sheets are selected here and that can be really um, useful. If you are wanting to push revision data, issue data, drawing stamps or pull transmittal information from other documents, then you click the select folder button and you can select a project folder and all of the files, all of the Vectorworks files in that folder will be listed in this dialog. So let's go ahead and add a revision here and this is fairly familiar but uh, it's nice that you actually see that revision uh, listed here and we might just turn off a couple of these and do another one and you'll see that that all of the revisions are going to get listed against the drawings here but you can close them up so that you're only just seeing the uh, the sheet names uh, now I'm going to talk about transmittals now, so if you don't use transmittals you can, you can sort of close down the movie, but uh, there's a couple of interesting uh, uh, and important things to do with the transmittals. Firstly, you access them using the Project Revision History tab here, and we select this and we're going to create a worksheet called Transmittal. We want to put it on a new layer, let's call this uh, Transmittal Sheet. Trains middle speed sheet. 
This is where you specify the starting row for the sheets and the row count. There will be a more detailed explanation of this in a separate movie, but I just particularly wanted to show this now. The select sheets to use, so you want to push all of the sheets out. So it's really important after you've been adding issues or revisions not to the full set of drawings that you come in here and you select all of the sheets that you want to appear in the transmittal. And this particularly applies for the next point, which is that when you want to create a new column in the transmittal, you have to create an issue because essentially that's what it is. You're issuing a set of drawings with these revision numbers on this particular date to these people. So this is a, a critical difference between the way this title block manager works compared to the VA revise issue print. So let's go ahead and add an issue here. And Let's say it was to the client, click OK. So we've got one issue there and essentially that's all we need to do because we've, we've ticked this box here. When we click OK, you'll see the transmittal sheet got created as we specified and here's the transmittal. And then you can see there's our um, our revisions are listed there. There's the issue for this particular one. And again, if you want to create another issue to create a new column in the in the worksheet, then you create a new issue. And, and that's the way it works. You can do it on mass like this, or you can do it sheet by sheet using the title block border settings button.